Remember this guy? That alone could have been a stunt in itself. But let's go back. You want to hear a story of a guy that was exactly what you would hope for in a dominant basketball player, but didn't dominate? Well, this is that. At 6'9", 6'10", on a good day, mobile, could stretch the floor with his jump shot, competitive as they come, and also had the personality of a star. What happened? This was the guy up next in great forwards. Everyone seemed to love his game and outgoing aura. He had no enemies except these three reasons. Salute to James Flanders for the request. Today's feature, Quincy Cortez Miller. Born November 18th, 1992. It's your boy JC Stunning Growth. Ash, get it. Miller grew up in Chicago, Illinois. And by the age of 13, he moved to North Carolina where he'd really make a name for himself. Side note, what city do you think produces the best ballers? I must say, the Carolinas has to be at the top of that conversation. Miller was another down that line. By his junior year in high school, he was already receiving big time Division I offers from all the top schools. He had such a smooth game, reminiscent of a KD in stature, but Paul George in demeanor and play. He was rated as the top prospect in the class of 2011 by Slam Magazine over guys like Anthony Davis and Austin Rivers. By his senior season, he was projected to be the player of the year by ESPN before the season started. And this is where things took a turn for the worse. Stunt number one, your game is only as strong as your tools. Unfortunately for Miller, before the season could even get going, he tore his ACL in December of that year, which made him miss the entire season. A season where he was projected to be one of, if not the best player in the class. This injury took a lot from him. Not only did it take his athletic ability, but it did take away a chance for him to solidify himself as the best player in the class and put a spotlight on him, which would in turn push his star power higher, allowing him to have a real shot at a high draft pick. But it also took away some key development opportunities he desperately needed. Going up against top competition with that pressure on your back brings out the best in some players. This was his chance to prove to everyone along with himself that he belonged. Being hurt that young can really stunt your growth in ways being injured later doesn't. The injury also took away his status as a McDonald's All-American, although he was able to make the Jordan Brand Classic team as an honorary participant. He did not play in that game. That's a testament to how good this guy was. He was rated as high as number four in his class by the end of the season could have went higher had he participated fully. Stunt number two, the back burner. Miller would go on to attend a school he'd committed to since 2010, Baylor, with his best friend, high school teammate, and future stunted growth feature, Deuce Bello. Now, any other time I would say going to this school stunted his growth, and I could definitely make a great case, but I don't think that was the issue. It wasn't the school he chose, but rather the player that was supposed to leave as a one-and-done player didn't. Perry Jones needed to make room for Miller, who was poised to take that position. What ended up happening was because Perry was also a high school star, and there first, he slid right back into his role as the face of the team after serving his five-game suspension for receiving benefits before attending Baylor. They should just go ahead and pay these guys, man. It's embarrassing that everyone knows these schools, especially a program like Baylor, that continues to get big name players, yet we know no one really wants to go there. What have they done to receive such love? A North Carolina kid going to Baylor? Come on now. We know he got paid, dogs. Regardless, Miller came in and was an instant impact in Jones's absence, scoring 17, 17, and 20 in his first three games and averaging 16 points per game. He wouldn't score 17 or more again until the next year, January 14th, against Oklahoma State. Jones came right in and took his shine. Nevertheless, the team was playing well and actually had a 13-game win streak, which he contributed heavily to. But we as fans wanted to see more. Everyone was thinking it, and it's frustrating we didn't get that. I think had he played that season as the lone star, he'd be a lottery pick easily. He had a career-high 29 points in a January loss to Missouri and finished the season as the co-Big 12 Freshman of the Year. 
he averaged 10.6 points per game, 5 rebounds per game, and shot 35% from the three. This was not good enough, especially for the decision he was about to make. Stunt number three, guess when you gotta go, you gotta go. Quincy was definitely expected to return for a sophomore season, and I think it would have actually served him well to. But he ultimately decided against it and entered the draft. But he would soon learn that the draft in the NBA is a whole different game. Everything is numbers based, trust me. He didn't have the numbers you would expect from a guy being a one and done player, especially a guy that missed his senior season and only played one season after it. He was selected in the second round by the Denver Nuggets in 2012. He would go on to make the roster, but was immediately sent to the D-League with the Iowa Energy. And this is the problem with leaving school when there's still work to be done on your game. Now teams can sit there and do whatever they want with you once you're a second round pick. He would be called up and sent back a few times in his first season. In his second season with the team, he was a little better, scoring a career-high 19 points in an overtime contest against Houston. But by the end of the season, he was waived. He would be picked up by the Sacramento Kings, Detroit Pistons, Brooklyn Nets on a few 10 days here and there, but didn't stick with them or any other team for that matter. Later taking his talents overseas where he's been ever since. A guy whose talent literally flew under the radar because of those three things. He's still young at 26, 27, so we'll see if he makes his way back. It's your boy JC Stunning Growth. Salute to the growth gang, man. I'm out.